friends today's video is about organochlorins and a special discussion on enrin which is an important short note organochlorins are widely used as pesticides they are nothing but chlorinated hydrocarbons they are divided into four categories first one ddt and its analogs second one benzene hexachlorides example indane third one cyclodienes and its related compounds in which we have the enrin endosulfan and so on fourth group is toxaphene and its related compounds coming to its absorption metabolism and excretion all of these pesticides are absorbed through skin orally and via inhalation these agents are highly lipid soluble okay then the ddt is least well absorbed it is the least well absorbed then they are partially metabolized in liver and directly excreted in the urine feces and milk enrin is rapidly metabolized and eliminated and does not persist in the body tissues action these organochlorins interfere with nerve impulse transmission the cns is first stimulated and then depressed fatal dose it is the lethal dose which means at this particular dosage of this particular drug the person will go for death it varies for various uh, compounds for example ddt it is 30 grams and lindane at 15 gram coming to enrin so enrin that is one of the organochlorins right that belongs to the cyclodiene group so it is polycyclic i'm sorry it is polycyclic and polychlorinated hydrocarbon that belongs to cyclodiene insecticides it is soluble in aromatic hydrocarbons and ketones sparingly soluble in alcohols but it is not at all soluble in water and its taste is bitter it is also called plant penicillin this is very important point very frequently asked in mcq the enrin is also called plant penicillin because of its broad spectrum of activity against various insects the trait names so the enrin are sold under the, in the market under various trait names like enrin v16 endotox ec20 endox tb50 and so on so all these products contains about 20 to 50% of enrin mixed with petroleum hydrocarbons such as aromax that smells like kerosene this is again an important point because in the post mortem appearance when the mouth and the stomach contains uh, smell like kerosene it is an indicative of this uh, agricultural poisoning frequently okay the symptoms it begins within 1 to 6 hours as you can see here there are a lot of symptoms but how to memorize it it's easy just imagine a body start from the top you have as you can see here no just at the face we have increased salivation nausea vomiting abdominal pain just from a single fi- figure you can easily remember okay uh, next in the face we have eyes now so we have midriasis there is dilatation of the pupil there will be headache there will be froth coming from the mouth and nose okay and it's coming to throat think about throat there will be hoarseness of voice coughing will be there then about all about brain there is a cns we have uh, giddiness restlessness hyper irritability incoordination ataxia mental confusion there will be tremors okay there will be tremors and tonic and clonic convulsions coma and finally death due to respiratory failure so i think it's easy just try to re- recollect that salivation there will be increased salivation nausea vomiting abdominal pain and um, hoarseness of voice coughing then we have headache dilated pupils froth at the mouth and nose then giddiness restlessness hyper irritability in coordination ataxia mental confusion tremors convulsions coma and finally death due to respiratory failure clear so coming about chronic poisoning so chronic poisoning means uh, what is acute poisoning we are having that particular poison in a large quantity at a time chronic poisoning is not that case there is some long term exposure okay so that there is cumulative toxicity the toxin is being added gradually right so there is cumulative toxicity it is characterized by loss of weight weakness ataxia tremors 
mental changes, oligospermia, increased tendency to leukemia, purpura, aplastic anemia and liver cancer. The lethal dose is about 5 to 6 gram. And here you remember if we are uh, having this poison uh, by ingestion, there it is 3 times as toxic as adrenaline and diadrine and 10 times as toxic as DDT. And the fatal period is 1 to several hours depending upon the dosage. Now the postpartum appearance, as we have already said, the mouth and stomach contains uh, smell of kerosene, then signs of asphyxia present. The endrin resists putrefaction. Putrefaction is one of the stages of decomposition. So the endrin can resist putrefaction and hence it can be detected in the viscera quite some time after death. Coming to the treatment, for any poisoning or any kind of uh, casualties, we have to maintain ABC. A is for airway, B is for breathing, C is for circulation. And the clothing is uh, removed. The skin is washed with soap and water. Then the gastric lavage or the stomach is evacuated by using emetics and cathartics. Emetics means those uh, that causes emesis or vomiting. And cathartics are agents that increase acidification. The next one, uh, give activated charcoal. So that absorption of the poison is decreased. Next one, cholestyramine. It is actually an anion exchange resin uh, which can increase the fecal excretion of the organochlorines. Next one, we have to remember that there is no specific candidate is present. Okay, uh, if there is convulsions, uh, administer diaspam. And calcium gluconate is also found useful. So, circumstances of poisoning it can be occupational, like farmers. Okay, so it can be occupational or accidental exposure, and the suicide is very common. The homicide is rare. However, sometimes it is mixed with food or sweets or alcohols to conceal the smell. So that's about ending. And thanks for watching. If you find my video useful, kindly like, share and give your suggestions in the comment box. Please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.